Hello there, ladies and gents. It's Octavian, I'm back again. And, uh, I'm sorry for the delay since my previous video. There's been a lot of stuff going on. And it's all very, very adequately explained in my short little, um, I think I titled it Apology Video or something like that. Just one up today or yesterday sometime, depending on when this video goes up. But, uh, yeah. If you're curious as to why I've been absent for a while, you can go ahead and take a gander over there. It does a good job of explaining that. If you aren't curious and you just want to hear me shoutcast a game of League of Legends, well, I've got a treat for you then, because this is indeed League of Legends, and I am here to shoutcast it. <laughs> Cali trolls and Solo just uh, taunting at one another. Actually, walking right next to each other. This is a very friendly start. Does mean the Cali Trolls gets to get that deep ward though, and oh, actually, it was all a trap. Solo was just buying time, but maybe, maybe it is a trap for Blue Team as well. Crumbs was hiding in the bush. He didn't have the unburrow though, since he went with the Q first, so he didn't have any CC. And that means that Cali Trolls and Crumbs are both going to get chunked to half, and overall, taking a look, taking a glance around at summoner spells, it looks like Crumbs was the only one to really lose out on anything important there. So that's going to be a flash burned, and maybe we'll have some more engagements here at the level one. Mad Life Dryhard being flayed backwards by Piglet. Phoenix is here as well, tossing in a few auto attacks. Though it looks like Dryhard's going to be able to get back to the safe range of his turret. Toss out a Peacemaker just for fun. And, uh, actually, if they can continue to pressure him, he might have to stick around. Yeah, the minions showed up, and that means... The tryhard is forced to pop that health potion. Only one he gets with his rations alongside the Doran's blade. And that's going to be rough for him, actually. That's a lot of damage at the early level 1, and it means that Phoenix and Piglet are able to come up and make the pressure happen. There's the ignite, the flash for the flay as well. Thankfully, Eye of the Storm was around to protect Tryhard from those last few ticks of the burn. But that's going to be a huge advantage already accrued by Red Team down on the bottom side of the map here. Pardon me, haven't cast it in a little while. Just have to work out all the kinks. And Tryhard actually still not going back to base. It looked like he was considering it, but uh, he has no pressure here, and that is exemplified by the first blood that Phoenix just got. Flashing forward and uh, doing his Ezreal play proud. Going to be picking up the first blood in this game for Red Team. 400 gold in his pocket. I'm sure he'll be happy with that. And um, all of that action in the bottom lane does mean that I haven't had the time to talk about some of the other stuff that I wanted to get into, some of the reasons why I picked this particular match. Those reasons actually don't have much to do with the bottom lane. Not to degrade the players down there, but uh, I'll have to get back to that. Piglet is here in the mid lane. He's got a flay onto Alex each. Alex each is doing his best to roam away. Might be able to escape. And here comes Crumbs out of the jungle, though. Actually, the unburrow onto Piglet will knock him up in the air. The ignite is burning, and we are, we're going to see... A kill back for blue team here. One to one now on the scoreboard as Alex each picks up one in the mid lane. And that's going to help him out a ton. Interesting mid lane matchup and that is one of the things that I wanted to get into this particular game. Alex each, he is over in the North American scene now by the way. Looks to actually be forming some sort of new um, team going, going in for yet another gambit. Playing his chances at the LCS. You don't have to laugh. It's okay. I know the joke was bad. Um, and he might, he might be able to make it this time. He's got some, he's he's got some players on the roster there that could be quite good. From what I've seen, um, now this is all up in the air. The team doesn't even have a solid name at this point. They've been playing under a bunch of different pseudonyms, but it seems like faces such as RF Legendary, Alex Each, of course, since I've been talking about him in the mid lane. Oh, actually, might have to get back to that in a second. Piglet is going very, very low. So many minions battering away. And Thrash is not able to sustain that sort of onslaught at this point in the game. That is a kill, admittedly, going over to Vesper's Janna, but still a kill. That's going to help out a ton. Matt Life Tryhard fell behind, definitely fell behind in that lane because of that level 1. But now he's back even in CS, and uh, while the assist is not going to do as much work for him in terms of the, for, in terms of gold as the first blood is going to do for Phoenix, the XP will be nice from that kill. And all of this harassing that they're managing to land on a Phoenix, even under the tower, that is a Caitlyn channeling for you right there. 
even with the minor early setbacks, they are still laying in with the pressure and making a lot of bad things happen for Phoenix. Maximum range can do that. Ooh, Alberto Rodrigo. Crumbs' his alt account, by the way, is up in the top lane. Chilling Smite lands on an impact. He tunnels away, but that means the impact will just turn the other direction. But he did manage to get around behind him. But a little bit of an angular direction there. And uh, that means that impact will be able to keep himself safe. Get back into the tower. Loses half of his health for it. But the lane is going well enough for him that he can actually afford that sort of trade right now. Double knockup. Nicely placed by Vesper, but he's very low on mana, so they're going to have to back off from the rest of this potential fight. But as they do so, they aren't hesitating to throw back a few auto attacks, and knowing the limits of your champion, knowing the limits of any particular engagement, is one of the marks of quite a good player. Nice Q from Phoenix, weaving it between the minions. Arcane Shot does a lot of damage if you manage to consistently land them in lane. There's the hook. Consistently landing those is a pretty big deal as well. Vesper getting flayed backwards. There's the lantern back the other direction to pull in solo. And we see the first Kha'Zix gank of the game. Tryhard gets the kill into Phoenix though. Where was that damage coming from? I did not expect that. So far a one for one, but it will be a double kill for solo. They do at least make up for that death, but Phoenix overstepping his bounds a little bit. Gives up a kill back to the Caitlyn. That should have been an easy one or two for O, depending. But they ended up going with a little bit of a messy one for two, still in their favor, obviously. Mathematically speaking, two is bigger than one. But uh, that's that's a little rough for Phoenix. Not into, I, I was very surprised by that burst of damage, so I suppose Phoenix was in the same sort of situation. <laughs> Crumb's doing his best to clear out some vision, but he does get ambushed by Solo, who has the level 6 advantage right now. Flashing forward to follow him, landing the slow, goes into the third or second proc of his invisibility to land another slow, but a tunnel over the wall will keep the Rek'Sai safe. And Solo will head back to his own jungle. Trading a flash for a flash. That is one of the things about the Kha'Zix versus Rek'Sai matchup. Not one that we see too often, mainly just because we don't see Kha'Zix too often. We do see plenty of Rek'Sai. Rek'Sai has become one of the most popular junglers in the game, I would have to say, recently. Uh, and for good reason. Lots of advantages there that can be built up. But one of the disadvantages of Rek'Sai, one of her few flaws, is the fact that her ulti is useless in a 1v1. It's it's map movement. It's sort of like a Twisted Fate sort of situation. You don't solo... You don't try and solo fight the enemy mid laner as Twisted Fate unless you've already got a lead or something like that, past level 6 at least. Because... Destiny is not good for that. The enemy laner is likely going to have a combat-oriented ult. Similar thing with the Kha'Zix versus Rek'Sai matchup. Though to be fair, it's a lot less daunting for the Rek'Sai because you're not going to be fighting Kha'Zix as often. You're not up in the enemy counterpart's face as continuously as you are if you're in a lane. Woo, hook nearly landing on the piglet. Lots of damage back onto Phoenix. There's the nice knockup from Vesper. Well placed again. This guy knows how to place those tornadoes. Too bad there's no ace in the hole or else we might have been seeing another kill on to go onto Caitlyn here, but maybe we will see one anyways. Piglet forced to flash away. There's the hook back onto Vesper though. The flay under the tower. The ignite is burning. An auto attack from Piglet will finish off the kill. Came a little too close for comfort on that one. And despite a few very nice tornadoes, Vesper still goes down. Not accounting for exactly how squishy Janna can be when caught out. There's the ace in the hole I was talking about, but the health potions from Phoenix means that he's tanky enough to survive the burst. And there's Matt Life Tryhard getting hooked under the tower. The shield from the lantern will keep Piglet alive through the hook. Just playing with the edge of death. Piglet manages to bait two enemies under the tower into hook range, and this guy has been consistent. hes I feel like he's landed three out of every four hooks I've seen him throw, which is a very good ratio. And good going, Piglet. He's been, he's been doing quite a good job of that thresh in the bottom lane. I don't know if he can save Phoenix here. The lantern will be enough. And I'll get him out of there. I thought maybe they had the burst in time. But no, that is a Janna, not a very bursty champion. Rek'Sai has some damage, but... Wasn't quite enough. And so Phoenix and Piglet will once again escape by the skin of their teeth. As uh, Zhao Zhao is choosing to go in onto Alex each here. There's the death mark. The knockup not going to connect onto anybody. So even without it landing, the zoning was enough. And Alex each will be safe on the mid lane. Cho'Gath that I have not talked about at all. We're nearly 10 minutes into the game. And that is, 
either a really exciting or depressing fact, depending on how you look at it, because it means we've had so much action, I haven't had time to talk about this. Speaking of action, we might have some more of it. Vesper roaming to the mid lane. Xiao Wei Xiao tossed a shadow under the tower, but didn't want to follow it up for the dive. And he actually got counter jungled right there. All that time investing in the mid lane by Solo does mean that he's actually getting caught out trying to go back for his jungle. That burst of true damage, not to be underestimated. And Alberto Rengifo, Crumbs his alt, by the way. I believe I might have mentioned that already, but just for those of you who are getting caught up in all the action that's happening. It is Crumbs' alt, Vesper, trapped between a rock and a hard place, even though the Malphite is on his team. Flash over the wall from Impact after the Monsoon knocks him back away. There's the Chilling Smite to slow down the rumble. The box not going to connect onto anyone a little bit late. Pilled over Peacemaker over the wall, not going to connect either, but not quite as impactful as the box, mis box missing. rather. The hook doesn't miss, though. That hits as well. Exhaust back onto the Thresh, not the primary target for that. Phoenix actually gets the kill on the Vesper, and it looks like he's going to be able to escape with a good use of the heal for the speed buff. And the Exhaust on the Piglet was a little bit questionable there, since it did allow Phoenix to pick up his third kill. The AD carries KDAs mirroring each other right now, and that life coming out the worst for the wear. Rangifo getting burned down by the Flame Spitter, goes nearly down to the ground, but uh, with... Ooh, Ace in the Hole comes out, Piglet going to be able to dodge it. And with no no barrage for Phoenix, I think that Crumbs will be able to head his way back on home to base, despite being very low on health. And within view of an Ezreal, generally not a combo you want. But thankfully, Phoenix had already used the ult earlier to burst down Vesper, so I suppose he still got it used for a kill, so either way, worth for him. Flash burned in the mid lane as Rengifo is coming back here with that Void Rush, not spending any more time in base than is necessary, and pressuring Jawe Jawe away. And that's actually going to be the uh, Zed's flash down, so good use of the Void Rush. Definitely worth that cooldown trade, even though Alex Each was forced to burn his flash earlier, but it at least evens out that uh, sort of disadvantage. Oh, here comes Solo, though, and this is a bad time for Crumbs to leave. <laughs> we have a roam from Rumble as well. The slow doesn't land on Alex Each. He's using that zoning potential very nicely, and that'll be a kill picked up for Crumbs, but he's got nowhere left to go. And a shuriken over the wall from Xiao Wei Zhao will secure that kill while he's on the red carpet of pain. Ooh, double knockup though. Vesper, it was a well-placed tornado. It hit two people, but well-placed does not always equate to well-timed. He had shown up a few moments earlier. Perhaps, perhaps AI of the Storm could have saved Alex each, but that's all bygones, and uh, Cali Trolls is going to be able to keep on pushing top lane, which has not been all that exciting the lane so far. I was hoping for the AP full damage Malphite that we sometimes see Cali Trolls pick up in solo queue, maybe even occasionally in competitive play. Back when he played in the Lone Star tournament, he did that once or twice, and it threw some enemies off guard. One of the reasons why they did so well. Um, that was a particularly fun tournament to watch. If you do want to see teammate shenanigans and a lot of their earlier stuff before they went through the first season of the LCS, which they've been through, and before that sort of tempered them a bit, I'd suggest going and giving it a look. Also some really nice casting done by Zyrene, as well as I believe Skara casted a bit of that one. Flash over, away from the box, and there's Vesper caught off to the side, goes down to half health, a few more auto attacks from Phoenix, nice kiting through the minions, does avoid some of the damage from Ezreal, and so there's a teleport coming down from top lane, Cali Trolls is here, and Piglet is suddenly way out of position, Tryhard picks up the kill. And despite the fact that it didn't look too impactful of a teleport, as in Cali Trolls just showed up and tossed a Q, he didn't actually do too much once he got there. It was really impactful because it turned around that whole situation. The pressure alone of that giant blue pillar from the sky was enough to uh, turn what could have been a kill going over to red into a kill for blue. Phoenix forced to back off here. I think he still, yes, he does still have Arcane Shift available, so. He was just hanging on to that cooldown in case he really needed it. Decided to take a little bit of damage instead of shifting away early. There, that, that's what he was saving it for. Avoiding the CC, always a good thing to be able to... You you only get one arcane shift in the course of a skirmish, in the course of a short fight. So it's best to use it judiciously and make sure that you know exactly what you're saving it for. Sadly, Thresh does not have an arcane shift, and so he will get knocked up by the tornado. And uh, we see Crumbs moving to the bottom lane. Nice Q, but uh, Crumbs once again coming around the side, and Piglet does not have any summoners up. He is getting punished over and over for the aggressiveness of his play. Flashing forward to try and make plays earlier does mean he did not have it then. So he's forced 
to go down there. Knock up from Cali trolls onto Xiao Wei Zhao while he's under the tower, and that is the fourth or third, third or fourth death mark we've seen from Xiao Wei Zhao that has not resulted in a kill. And a little bit of an unfortunate laning phase so far. Not terribly unfortunate, of course, but he hasn't really been able to move out of the lane. Exhaust onto Phoenix. I'll get back to that in a moment. Matt Life Tryhard with the headshot up does do some good damage, but he has no mana to cast any spells. Dodging away around through the minions to avoid the skill shots. There's the heal. Vesper is back as well. A few auto attacks, and Matt Life Tryhard will pick up the kill, despite the fact that he didn't cast a single spell. Well kited, well played. Good use of his own minions there. As I said, dodging away from potential Ezreal skill shots. And, uh, too many minions, too much, too much, uh, power in that heal. Too much health gained back. There's the box, there's the flay and piglet <laughs> with a quick one-two punch. We'll do away with any of the potential nonsense from that Caitlyn Jana duo. And just, uh, claim another soul for his lantern. Crubs is sitting around on the bottom side of the map, but... I don't think Piglet's gonna play all that aggressively right here. Doesn't have very much health, just used all of his large cooldowns, and still doesn't have the flash up. So I don't think Crumbs is gonna get much of an opportunity to make a kill happen unless he chooses to go for the dive, but perhaps Alex Each will get one. Whoa! That is an AP Cho'Gath with the Rod of Ages stacking up right there. Just instantly dead, not even time for any reaction. I think after the combo, he was one auto attack away from dead. And Alex Each was happy to provide it. Here's Solo, though. Chilling Smite gonna slow him down. Prey Seeker over the wall will keep track of where he's going, and that'll be the dragon nearly certainly secured for blue. I don't see why Crumbs is not choosing to go back to it. Solo has to go back to base. He doesn't have Flash. There's, I suppose there is pressure on the bottom side of the map here. Thresh and Ezreal could provide enough uh, of a threat near the dragon pit to prevent Alex Each and crumbs from really going for that and besides they can still take global pressure elsewhere anyways they can trade these two turrets away and that'll give them a turret lead on the board so and it's not really imperative at 17 minutes into the game to get that first dragon it's valuable i'm, I'm not gonna lie it's, it is strong but it's not the most important thing on the board and there's an argument to be made that the first mid lane turret is indeed more of a valuable thing at this point in the game so Good eye, perhaps, from Crumbs and Alex H going for that map movement, but uh, we have some more fighting in the top lane. Unstoppable Force used just as an escape. Flash as well burned. Cali Trolls, I don't think he's getting out of this, despite throwing everything at the wall to try and go get out. That'll be one dead rock. I don't know how one kills a rock, but apparently, uh, apparently Solo and Impact know how, and they demonstrated it. There's Crumbs over the wall, flash forward, Phoenix forced to flash away as well. The hook onto Crumbs, as well as the Flay, and bringing in Impact with the Lantern, but Piglet's going very, very low. Tryhard is not getting touched, he's just got free reign with the long range auto attacks over the wall on the other side of the little wall there. Peacemaker chunks down Impact, Zephyr gonna be doing a bit of work as well. Here comes the Teleport for Blue Team. Calentrons is back and raring to go, and he's gonna be diving. The wall will slow him down, but he has no fear at all. He walks right into another portion of it. Piglet flays him back. Perhaps he should have been a bit more reserved. Matlife Tryhard does get the kill. Gets another one with the crit. Double kill for him. Phoenix going low. The auto attack from Janna won't be enough as he flashes away to safety. And four members of blue team below a third of their health. None of them go down, though. And Alex Zish is here to be the bodyguard. I don't know if he'll be enough, though. Cali Trolls... Is that shield? No. No, it will not save him. Zhao Wei Zhao picks up a cleanup kill, but in the end... Actually, did that work out about evenly? That, that's two kills. Two kills went to red. And I think two kills went to blue, and we might see some more because the equalizer is back up for impact. Alex Eish getting slowed up. He's very tanky, and he flashes away back towards the enemy. And he, he just goes a feasting on the enemy mid laner Zhao Wei Zhao proves a nice tasty mortal morsel and mortal I don't know is Cho'Gath immortal? is he some sort of immortal god beast? I'm not sure it's not really covered in the lore whether or not Cho'Gath is going to have a midlife crisis at some point and buy a gigantic open top car and go driving around the countryside of California that is a very, very strange image. Not exactly where I expected to be going with this cast, but it always takes you in paths that you don't quite anticipate. Both red buff being done at the same moment here. 
I'm, I'm a little curious as to why Solo did choose to go with the Kha'Zix. It's not entirely irrelevant. The current meta actually has a lot of room for a lot of different champions, which is very, very nice, and I commend Riot for that, but uh, we'll have to get back to that in a second. Double knockups, knocking up two people, and giving a double kill to Alex each. He's going to be happy with that one, getting quite large off of the result of all of his feasting. Both in terms of hit points and in terms of damage, he's going a very, very damage-focused Cho'Gath build. It does mean he's actually moderately squishy, despite the fact that he looks like he's so tanky. He's pretty squishy, not too difficult to tank down, take down, because all that health dissipates fairly fast without any armor or magic resist to hold it together. We do have blue team rotating to the bottom lane. Looks like they might be going for a tower push, and they do get it! Red turret is destroyed. Jawe Jawe over the wall, got out all alone. The hook lands into Alex Eich might actually be enough. No, the knock up the very tail edge of the rupture. Crumbs is unstoppable. And the equalizer just going to prove an annoyance as a tasty cupcake might prove the downfall for Thresh. No, he, does, he just about survives. Piglet is moderately tanky. Has some health to back himself up. But that was not... And that cupcake was not worth the price. Think more carefully about what pastries you choose to consume, Piglet. They just might be poisoned by an entire enemy team. Knock up onto Piglet as he tosses out a hook that goes very wide. Crumbs traveling over the wall through one of his tunnels. And uh, Impact gets hit by a net, slowed up, and it looks like Blue Team is going to, through all their different manners, escape. I was just about to say that everybody's going to get out of there. But Vesper proves me wrong by dying while basing in a bush. Solo. Showing us that Kazakh still is the king of instantaneous burst on a solo target. And one moment there was a Janna, the next moment there was not a Janna. I suppose there still was one, just a very, very dead one. Crumbs returning to farming his blue buff, which is a little bit interesting. And yes, it looks like Alex H is going to be coming over to pick this up. Yeah, Rek'Sai, one of the worst champions to have blue buff on. Uh, cool introduction is nice, I suppose, but entirely resourceless doesn't... well, I, I say that, but Rage is technically a resource, but it doesn't have anything to do with the blue buff. It's not a regenerating resource. It's a resource that works similarly, similarly to Trindomir's Rage or something like that. Or Nars. It's one that builds up over time rather than degrades. There's Calitrolls coming in from the side. Jawa Jawa gets knocked up by the Unstoppable Force. Alex Each is here to try and follow up and knock up. Nicely lands on the Piglet. Down to half health already, and there is the Q, actually, from Calitrol sneaks in past the feast and finishes off the kill, but still the burst from the Cho'Gath was there to help finish it off, and Zhao Wei Zhao, Ace in the Hole, is chasing after him. He nearly goes down the Zephyr from Vesper. will take the final blow. Solo leaping out while exhausted. He's forced to flash over the wall just to escape. Matlife Tryhard is here as well. The auto attack or two. Impact has no way into this fight. He's going to be using the base gate to try and get into a decent situation. But it doesn't look like he'll be able to make anything happen, and that is going to be the secondary turret in the top lane falling. Ezreal ult, not really going to have too much effect. Phoenix actually arcane shifts forward, that was aggressive. It looks like blue team already had the plan laid out to back away. They might get caught out in the jungle here if Impact has the ulti up. He doesn't, they don't have rumble ulti, I don't know why they're chasing this so hard. Without Equalizer, I don't think that they can really make this fight work. Maybe Solo can catch somebody off, but they're sticking together pretty well. Gonna make it really difficult for Kha'Zix to do anything. Yeah, I... I th th at least it didn't turn out poorly for them. At least they didn't face check into a bush or get ambushed while turning a corner or something like that. That would have been the worst case scenario, but even so, it's a little bit of time wasted. They could have spent that maybe trying to clear their own jungle of vision or push up a lane or something. Phoenix was pushing top lane, so they did at least get that. But I think that was a little bit of an overzealous play, even though it wasn't punished too hard. Now they're going to get a little bit of pressure in the mid lane from Alex Each, and I would like to take note of the build that he's going. I said earlier that he's going a very aggressive AP build. And he hasn't really changed form in uh, in terms of that. He's gone with a needlessly large rod. Could be building that into a death cap. Not a bad item for Cho'Gath. His ratios are quite good. 
Uh, so building just raw AP is strong. Could also build into his Zonias. Which is also a strong item on Cho'Gath. The extra armor is really efficient behind all that health. Or in front of all that health, I suppose. Ooh, Xiao Wei Xiao getting the wrong end of the Cho'Gath burst here. Alex Yish is unstoppable. The death mark barely tickles him. Yeah, I would like to see a Zonia's Hourglass. I think that would be the better pickup here for Alex Yish. He's far enough ahead that either one will likely serve him well. Um, but the Zonia's is just going to make it so that he doesn't really need to kill people quickly. You know, it, it's a difficult thing to explain, but I will do my best. He doesn't really need to be the frontline damage for his team. They've got a Caitlyn to provide persistent damage, and they've got Rek'Sai doing a bit of work as well. 504 Crumbs is actually a threat. Um, so that means that if he's just sticky, if he's just really hard to take off the battlefield, then Alex Each will do much more for his team than if he's able to suddenly burst one person down, because they're going to be able to kill people anyways. They have enough damage. What they need right now, or what would be mo most beneficial right now, is someone who the enemy team simply can't deal with. They just don't have a method for getting rid of him, so they have to hope that they can get rid of his teammate instead. Kali Trolls using the Unstoppable Force to try and escape here. Zhao Zhao goes down to half health. Alex Yish is here as well. The silence onto Zhao Zhao means he can't swap away. The Ignite is burning, and Matt Life Dryer is on a killing spree. Alex Yish does go down as he gets knocked back into the enemy team. Now it's a 4v4 with Solo still at full health. Piglet flashes forward. The hook lands on the Kali Trolls. Not exactly where they wanted it. Crumbs turning back into the human team and might actually give up the first death of the game for him. There he goes the shutdown. Another one for one trade. Matt Life going very, very low. Flashes away. Heals as well. Solo now getting crit up as Matt Life is doing his best to try and DPS, but there are so many threats coming his way. The shield from John will keep him alive through Phoenix's DPS and there is Cali Trolls. Finishes off the kill. Piglet all alone. Nobody to back him up. Ace in the hole will come out and prove his doom. Very exciting. Very back and forth team fight. And it's going to end with a surrender. Thank you guys for watching be the victory for blue team for the mid lane Cho'Gath for the top lane Malphite you guys are all great my name is Octavian I'll be seeing you next time